Hello viewers, for those of you that have watched the previous episodes, they want to know that in this series we are disassembling a BMW S54, detailed as possible. To this point right now we have removed the cylinder head and everything around it, all the accessories. So let me show you where we at right now. So there are parts everywhere lying in the shop. I try to keep them sorted as possible. This is the timing components, this is the cylinder head itself, we have checked the pistons, the cylinders, everything seems okay for now. Even the pistons, the, the piston crowns are looking pretty good without any crazy debris or anything like that. Yeah, the chain is still laying around. Now we're going to remove the damper for the crankshaft and the timing cover. Okay, so let's remove the damper for the crankshaft. Okay. Okay, let me first remove this, like so. And probably, yeah, it's going to get out. I was scared that it's going to be stuck. Okay, so this is how it looks from behind. So now I'm going to remove the open. For the first time, I'm going to rotate the engine on the upside down. Probably it's going to leak from everywhere. Two hands. I guess there is some oil inside the open. Not sure how much, but... Okay. Let's remove the open. As you can see, we have some damage on the level sensor, the oil level sensor, which I'm not going to use. I'm still searching for a plate, which actually original BMW has for bypassing this sensor, but still I cannot find it. I believe the TDS oil pans have this plate, but uh, for now I'm unlucky to find this one. Still going to search for it because I'm not going to use this. And my dashboard, the instrument coaster don't have that option, so I'm just going to remove it. I'm just going to remove this cap because I want to see which type of gasket. I want to see which type of gasket is underneath because there are two type of gaskets and I want to see which one I need to order. So, here is the oil pickup tube goes in and preventing some big chunks to be sucked through the oil pump. And this is why this is here and there is a lot of debris in, of course. So this is the metal gasket. So let me try to remove it. It's kind of stuck. I just wanted to see this, for now I'm going to reinstall it back in place, so to be closed, after that when we reassemble everything, I'm going to change the gasket and clean everything, but for now it's better to be like that. The whole switch is for the oil separation system, I don't think I'm going to change it because it doesn't look that it leaks, uh, it looks in good condition, so I'm just going to remove these two screws and going to leave it attached like that. Okay, so let's remove all the bolts, they are a lot. Okay, I believe this is all the bolts. Now I need to pry it a little bit, probably it's kind of stuck. Okay, let's see what we have underneath. Like that. Okay. Yeah, this should be the last one. Okay, it was relatively easy. I was not expecting this. Yeah, here we have a C-clip. I think it was called C-clip. And the biggest reason why this engine is much more reliable 
is because of this this tensioner or the, on the oil pump as you know guys most of the BMWs don't have this actually M50 engines have originally this and I don't know why M50 have it and M52 and M54 don't have it but as you most of you probably have seen on my channel we have installed this type of tensioner on the M52 and M54 engines so to remove the slack of the chain which can cause some issues with this not by issues I mean by undoing itself okay now I'm going to remove this C clip so to be able to remove the guides okay the first one and the second one this is the C clips I, I think it's called C clips uh, which holds the guides in place now I should be able to remove everything okay Let's separate uh, but the chain I believe I should be I should be able to remove it with this guide like so and actually on this engine you can remove the crankshaft gear there is a bolt inside for now I'm not going to remove it maybe later on uh, but for now let me remove the C-clip on the tensioner of the oil pump so to be able to remove this chain I believe this is more let me check it yes uh, the C-clip on this tensioner is more than the other, the other ones so let's see I'm not going to be able to remove it okay like so this is the springy effect which is causing the chain to have less swag okay so first of all there are two bolts here which is holding the suction pipes with some plates which are attached to the main, main bearing bolts and after that we're going to remove this, these two bolts okay so H4 okay this is the first pipe and here just it has o-ring so now I'm going to remove the oil pump tight how to broke a wrench how to broke a ratchet die okay I believe there are only four bolts yes and I'm right so okay let me put that aside and pretty much we have uncovered the bolts for the main and the corner bearings so I'm going to start I'm going to start with what? I'm going to start with the yeah with the corner rods I'm going to start with the corner rods so yeah probably going to remove the pistons also so to see probably going to clean the pistons and the the piston rings probably they will be in good condition but still I'm going to clean them okay just to be on the safe side I'm going to do my own markings with the number of the cone rods and the arrow pointing to the front of the engine okay. imagine doing this inside the car it's going to be so much hard but I know it's doable so and actually they look kind of decent yeah for sure it has small wear on them but this was going to last for at least 30 or 40 thousand kilometers so now I'm going to try to push up the piston okay I managed to do it 
and the first piston is out okay so this is the bearings on the corn rod side as we can see here it we have some spot let me zoom in a little bit we have some spot which uh, is a little bit more weird than usual this one looks kind of decent as this one actually on cylinder number six looks kind of weird still they have some wife in them while well, i'm here for sure i'm going to change them does matter what in what condition they are i'm going to change them so now i'm going to continue with the main bearings i'm pretty certain that they going to be in relatively good condition actually i don't want to change them if they are in kind of good condition because these engines rarely have issues with main bearings they should be like let's say this one so to make me change them uh, we're going to see but first of all i'm going to need to remove this cap rear main seal crankshaft cap because i'm not going to have access to these bolts so i cannot fit socket here okay here are just regular bolts uh, yeah the engine actually came with flywheel and coach pack which were in relatively really good condition which the owner of the engine said me like a bonus so thanks michael and yeah i have removed it just before attaching the engine to the engine stand because if i attach it with the flywheel uh, then i'm not going to be able to remove this firstly i'm not going to be able to remove the flywheel uh, and to gain access to this so that's why we have removed the flywheel and then we proceed with the attaching to the engine stand Okay, and now this should came out relatively easy. Here is kind of sticky. Okay, so this is the rear main cap seal. Now we're going to have enough access to these two bolts. Okay, let's start with the main bearings. As from every BMW engine, on the main bearings, cups especially, we have numbering from 1 to 5. This is the axial bearing, so you cannot mess it up. And the last bearing cup doesn't have number, because once again, if you have numbers from 1, 1 to 5, it's pretty obvious where is going to be the last cup without number. I just made my arrows, so to be actually it's really hard to mess this around how to orient the cups but still why not make your life a little bit easier okay so let's see what is the condition of these bearings Okay, we have some small scarfing here. If it wasn't this scarfing, the bearing is like a brand new one. Here, once again, we have some small scarfing, but yeah, nothing crazy. Here is with the plate for the how it was called the old section pipes. So here, once again, just small scarfing. This one, just a smidge. This one looks pretty much like a brand new one. this is it has a little bit more wear but but this is nothing crazy guys this is going to last a really long period of time but this one is kind of stuck try to help him oops oops stay in place 
<laughs> I was not expecting this. Okay, let me show you. Here we have also a axial bearing. As we can see, it's in really good condition. As here. So yeah. And now, let's remove the crankshaft. Which is easier said than done. So yesterday I got out of space in my cart, in my memory card. So let's continue today with the removal of the crankshaft. Okay, so we took the crankshaft. Now I'm going to show you the main bearings. How they look like. <laughs> so as I told you, and I was expecting, like on all of the old generation of BMW petrol engines, they look like a brand new ones with just small amount of wear, which is nothing. So once again, I'm not planning to change those on the main bearings, the upper part of the tunnel on the box side. The rod is not on this side of the channel, it's on the cup. And on the corn rods, it's on the corn rod itself, not on the cup. It's the opposite. Most of the time, this bearing looks better than done on the cup. Uh, so yeah, pretty much all of them look fine. And this is the crankshaft. Pretty much it's going to be fine because of the wear of the bearing. You're going to know that it's going to be straight. The only thing that I don't like here, there is some signs of something, but I cannot feel anything. So for sure, this crankshaft is in perfect condition. Yeah, this book covering is not from overheating. This is just the treatment from the factory, which is normal. So yeah, pretty much everything is disassembled. Okay guys, pretty much this is going to be the end of the series about the disassembly. Uh, let me show you how many parts we have removed from this engine. Uh, pretty much everything is covered uh, because I don't want to get any dirt in them. Uh, but this is the throttle body. Uh, here, here is the open. What was here? Yeah, here is the cylinder head. There are the accessories around the engine in this table all around. Ah, uh, yeah, this is the crankshaft. This is what was this? Yeah, the corn rods. We're going to have some issues with these corn rods, uh, but we're going to figure it out uh, because I was not expecting this kind of corn rods in this engine. But we're going to talk more about this in the assembly series. I don't want to go in details in the disassembly part. Yeah, this is the main bearing cups, and here is the timing components. Uh, actually, this is the camshafts and the uh, rocker arms and stuff. What was here? Yeah, this is the timing components, this is the oil pump. And yeah, the valve, I believe here was the valves and many more, does matter. So, the only thing that left so is the oil nozzles, which I'm just going to clean them up and see how about them. For now, I'm going to uh, leave them there. Pretty much, this is all about the assembly, so I'm going to end up the video here. We're going to see each other again when I get all the parts needed to start assembling the engine. So thank you for watching guys and see you in the next video.